Giving specific advice on this topic is difficult since I don't know what kind of business website you might have. However, in this part of the video, I can mention some more specific guidelines that are generally valid for all kinds of business websites. I split this video into two sections. The warning zone, where I mention some kinds of plugins that you should be extra careful to install. And the red zone, where I mention plugins that you should never install on a business website. So let's start with the warning zone, with plugins that trap you with spread dependencies. This is probably the most complex to explain. With spread dependencies, I mean page builder plugins and in general all those plugins that add some sort of dependency that spreads all over your website. Here's an example with a popular plugin, Elementor. Elementor is a page builder, so that means that the dependency is spread across all the pages of your website because every single page will be probably built with Elementor. Of course it depends because you can integrate Elementor in a way to use it only on specific pages, but what's likely when users use this kind of plugin is that they simply use it across their entire website. So if one day you need to stop using Elementor because maybe it gives you performance problems or other issues, since it's a heavy dependency for displaying all the content on your website, you can't just remove it. You will be forced to rebuild your entire website. And this maybe wouldn't be a problem on a hobby website, but imagine if you have a business website with a monthly recurring revenue in the five digits. Optimizing Elementor can be difficult, and at that point, it will be a leak in your revenue that will stop only when you finally replace it. And especially if the website is complex, that could require months of work. But despite we are in a warning zone here, there are also good examples of dependencies out there. Because of course there are plugins that will help you to save budget, so you don't have to recreate the same functionality yourself and reinvent the wheel, but at the same time they can be trusted in the long term. And a good example for this is WooCommerce. Despite WooCommerce adds a huge dependency on your website, because of course everything about the e-commerce functionality will depend on that part, it can still be a safe choice, because it's unlikely that one day you will be forced to stop using WooCommerce, and if necessary, it can be customized and optimized for your needs. So for example, WooCommerce could be a good addiction, like coffee. But whenever you're installing these plugins, it's always better to double check everything and if possible consult with an expert, because you are going to be married with these plugins for a long time. Plugins for automated backups. It's often a bad idea to install these plugins, because any decent WordPress hosting will include daily automated backups in all their plans, so you don't need to install anything on your website. You can just make backups from the hosting interface, and that's it. Plugins to customize the admin dashboard. With this, I mean plugins that let you change the order of menu items in WP Admin, or plugins that change radically how the media section of WordPress looks, for example. These plugins often add a lot of extra bloat to your website with minimal or no benefit. Plus, if you need to involve a collaborator on your website like a VA or a developer or maybe a copywriter, they may be confused by these edits. So they will need more time to navigate the interface since it doesn't reflect the standards of WordPress anymore and this can lead to errors or wasted time. Plugins that automatically optimize the images. Whenever you add a new image to WordPress, these plugins will automatically try to reduce the image's size to optimize page load speed. But in reality, many of these plugins are a complete disaster regarding performance. So you end up with a slower website for using a plugin that in theory should have increased your website speed. And unless you upload a lot of images every single day, you don't really need these plugins. You can avoid them entirely and just use different online tools to compress your images. Some good examples are tinyjpg.com or compressjpeg.com. These tools can help you to reduce uh, the image's sizes without relying on any kind of plugins that you have to install on your website. So you will not risk to ruin your website performance to optimize images. Now we can move on to the next category, which here we will call the red zone. In the warning zone, there were some exceptions, so probably there are some scenarios where you could install those plugins, 
but here I'll mention some plugin types that in my opinion you should never install on your WordPress website. Plugins to inject code. There are some plugins that let you add code directly from the admin dashboard of WordPress. And these plugins exist because usually the average non-technical user doesn't know where to add a particular snippet of code. But it's actually quite easy to learn where to add code like PHP, JavaScript or CSS. The difficult part is actually learning these languages, not really learning where to add code snippets. So this part of course makes these plugins completely useless because they will add a necessary bloat and it will be impossible to track your code edits on the website, for example with a git repository. If you don't know what a git repository is, that's easy. You just need to know that it's a tool to keep track of the edits on the custom code added on your website. And this will help you to expand and maintain your website in general. So for example, if you hire a new developer that never saw your website before and you don't have a git repository with all your code history, they may charge you more. It doesn't always happen, but it can happen because they will need more time to have an overview of the history behind the code on your website which is often necessary, of course, because if you hire them to fix uh, or expand your website code base, they will need to know exactly how to approach that. And that approach may change depending on your unique edits. But anyway, for now, just keep this in mind. Avoid using these plugins to inject code. And if you're not sure where to add that PHP code snippet you found on Google or where to add your CSS code, feel free to ask me. I can also create a short video since it's quite trivial to know where to add this custom code because again, the difficult part is learning the actual language, not really copy-pasting code that you found on Google. CSS customization plugins. This is really an extension of the previous guideline about plugins that inject code because these plugins will generate CSS with a visual and drag and drop interface or something similar. An example is CSS Hero, which is a plugin that will let you generate CSS with a visual interface. And maybe that can help you on a website where you're trying to learn CSS, but I wouldn't use that on a business website. The catch with this kind of plugin isn't only that it will be an extra plugin that will require additional resources without a good motivation. It's also that if you mess with CSS without knowing it properly, you risk breaking the website on specific devices, which is pretty critical. For example, imagine that you use this tool to create your website and it looks great on your large desktop display. But it could be that it's actually broken on specific devices. And the critical part about this is that if you don't know how to test a website properly, you will not be aware of that specific issue until a user will tell you. And before that user told you that your website wasn't working from their devices, you already lost all the business opportunities that came from that specific part of your customers. So if you are not confident in your CSS skills, don't try to apply these UI customizations on your own or with these plugins. Because unless you are a UI designer, you're actually risking breaking your website in exchange for minimal or zero business benefits. Plugins to access files on your server and the database from the admin dashboard. You can usually edit your WordPress website in three different ways. With the admin dashboard, with an SFTP client like FileZilla to edit the files on your server and the website structure, and with the database that you can usually access with your hosting interface. For security reasons, these three components are separate and require different credentials. And when you're using this kind of plugin, you remove completely a layer of security because now it's possible to access the entirety of your website, its files and the database directly from the admin interface of WordPress. I can also name two popular plugins of this kind, WP File Manager and WP PHP My Admin. In my opinion, it's a bad idea to use them because your website will be less secure and you're also installing plugins without a good reason. Because let's say that you want to edit your website files you can just use something like FileZilla without installing anything on WordPress. And using FileZilla is easy. You can learn how to do basic stuff in half an hour. And if you want to access your database, you can do it from your hosting service. So I don't really see good reasons to mess with your files and database from WP Admin. Maybe the only exception is when you're using a plugin to optimize your database, but that's another topic. To conclude this guide, I also wanted to mention two final points. 
Installing extra bloated plugins that you don't need not only will have an impact on the performance of your website, they may also have an impact on your work and your productivity. For example, imagine working on a dashboard that looks like this. Do you think you will be more productive here or on a dashboard that looks like this? So this is probably something else that you should keep in mind whenever you think about adding a new plugin to your website. Finally, the last thing I wanted to mention is about tools to test plugins. Many how to choose WordPress plugins guides suggest you to use some of these tools to test every single plugin you want to try. For example, uh, the Query Monitor plugin, New Relic, PageSpeed Insight, GT Metrics, uh, and other tools. Of course, feel free to do it if you have enough time. However, keep in mind that if you are not a developer with specific performance optimization skills, you may not understand much from these tests. So I'm not sure I would suggest you to test every single plugin you may find. And that's all for this guide, at least for now. I think this is the kind of topic that really never ends. So I may update this guide in the future with new tips and ideas. However, let me know if you have uh, any other ideas to choose uh, great plugins and if you have any questions, of course. And I'll see you in the next one.